And Eric, for more on this, let's bring in Nikki Neely, president of the National Grassroots Group, Parents Defending Education. Thank you so much for being here, Nikki. Um, first, can I get your reaction to this apology letter? Sure. Well, for starters, I think it's too little too late. They should never have sent it. And in Freedom of Information Act documents that we uh, obtained, it shows that the National School Board Association actually didn't even give their board a heads up. So it raises big questions about how this went through. And we also have an, uh, an email from the executive director, Chip Slavin, that notes that they had been in talks with the White House for several weeks before this. And their letter that they sent on September 29th actually contained material that the White House specifically requested. And so it raises a huge amount of questions about what kinds of coordination were happening behind the scenes who asked for this letter, and then how the Department of Justice was able to turn this around so quickly. Right, and, and just so that folks understand here, is that when that original letter came out and was sent to President Biden by the NSBA, you're the one who filed the Freedom of Information Act request, otherwise known as FOIA, on communications the board members were having, and what you found was quite a trail, especially in light of this apology and the reporting that Merrick Garland is pleased with it. Right. And, you know, it's one thing for the NSBA to apologize to their members. Um, we have heard just uh, from a whistleblower that 43 of the state school board associations actually had expressed their concerns directly to NSBA leadership about how this went down. Um, I asked the NSBA to confirm or deny that. They didn't respond to me. Mm -hmm. um, but beyond that, you know, what about the parents? What about the millions of parents who were labeled domestic terrorists by this organization? We demand an apology as well. And the fact that the Department of Justice then went and used this letter as a pretext to call in the FBI and the, and the U.S. attorneys, I'd like them to walk it back, too, and we haven't heard that yet, so I'm still waiting. Right. And in the, in the apology, the NSBA says, quote, we are engaged in a formal review of our processes and procedures. We will announce specific improvements soon to ensure there's improved coordination and consultation among our staff, our board and our members across the country. The review will include not only the proceedings leading to the letter, but also other related concerns raised by members even before the letter was sent. And Nikki, that last line about other concerns is interesting considering how badly the hornet's nest appears to have been kicked here. Right, well, we asked every state school board association for their comment on the NSBA's letter. We've heard back at this point from 21 states across the country. And two states in particular, Louisiana and Florida, expressed in their letter that they sent that they had not paid their dues yet this year, that they were very unhappy with leadership and how management decisions were being made. And so they had withheld their decisions. And a lot of states actually are considering whether they want to remain a member of this association. And so I'm not sure if NSBA leadership really knew what they were getting themselves into, but it shows that I think there maybe needs to be some house cleaning from the top. Well, and what do you think the takeaway is here? I mean, for parents watching at home and they're seeing how politics has become just another thread in this entire fabric of, of just educating kids, um, there was a, there's been a pushback here. Um, but what, what should parents do? They want to get involved, but they see this mess that's been created. I mean, I think what this shows is that, you know, a $19 million trade association with direct links to the White House is no match for a group of mad moms. Um, you know, people have, there is strength in numbers. There is uh, opposition to these ideas and how these things are being shoved down our throat. Um, it crosses party lines. It crosses racial lines, ethnic lines. And so there is a real groundswell of opposition to what's going on. And I'm really optimistic that if people keep doing, we can affect significant change. And so I'm, I'm very heartened by what's going on. And I think this, this uh, wave is going to continue. Well, it's something to be said that you took the time to track down all of that information. Very enlightening. President of Parents Defending Education, Nikki Neely, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.